the Rangers blew a golden chance to seal their ticket to the postseason with a close loss that, again, was blown by the bullpen. But this time, it might have actually been on Bruce Bochy. We're talking about all that and more on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on to the Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan, covering this team for 10 seasons, including all five as the host and founder of Locked On Rangers. Thank you all so much for making us your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Hit subscribe on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. Today is Friday, September 29th. Your Rangers are 89 and 70, still alone atop the AL West with a two-game lead over those stinking Houston Astros. And the magic number to clinch the AL West is still at two. Now, this was an incredibly frustrating game where the Rangers lost 3-2 to two on the West Coast, a game where they had the lead late in this one, and uh, surprise, surprise, the bullpen was the one who let it up. But it's not necessarily the bullpen's fault. I'll get into why and uh, some real frustrations with Bruce Bochy's management in this one and a little bit of frustration with the lineup. But I want to I start with the good stuff, and the good stuff has to start with Jordan Montgomery, an absolutely fantastic outing from your ace, your number one six innings of one run ball. The one run came off of a wall scraping home run by Julio Rodriguez. I don't think Julio Rodriguez has homered against the Rangers all season, which is a small miracle in and of itself. And you knew you were going to get burned, but it was, it was a wall scrape. It was one that I thought that I thought that Adoles Garcia was going to be able to reach over the wall and pull it back. The Rangers had some fantastic outfield defense all night by Adolis Garcia, by Leody Tavares making a really great read and a great jump in the eighth inning on a ball that Julio Rodriguez absolutely smoked. And and those two in center and right field had the only Rangers extra base hits, the, scored the only runs for the Rangers, drove them in with a solo shot from Adolis Garcia, his 39th of the season, and Leody Tavares, his 14th home run of the season. Fantastic stuff from both of them. Huge huge home runs and Adoles Garcia looked like he was about to freeze to death he had the whole the full ski mask whatever it's called on that was uh for a while just pulled down under his chin and then pulled it up over his mouth because he was just very very cold growing up in Cuba I'm sure there weren't a lot of very cold nights like there were last night in Seattle would really love for that cold weather to get down here because it's 85 degrees as I'm recording this at 11 o'clock in the morning on the Next to last day of September, um, really ready for some of that fall weather to make its way down here and some fall baseball. Hopefully some more October baseball than just October 1st, but uh, it's it's not looking like it. I mean, it's looking questionable at this point because the Rangers really could not get much going offensively in this one, but they did also get some outstanding outfield defense from Evan Carter. A great throw to nab the runner at third base. Look, guy is looking like an absolute five-tool player. There was a play that the winning play did go over his head. He was playing a little shallow in left field. It was against J.P. Crawford, a lefty who doesn't go the opposite field very much, so um, it kind of makes sense that he was playing a little bit more shallow, keep the keep the single in front of him, and it, if it's a double, it's over his head, then, you know, try and cut off the... You're basically playing to win as opposed to playing to not lose by playing him in shallow field, in shallow left field, so that if there is a chance to, you know, nail the runner, it, it was... It was, it was it made sense it made sense at the time and there's not another player that would have made that play on this roster i don't think travis jankowski is making that play i mean he's maybe a smidge faster maybe gets a smidge better reads in the outfield than evan carter but it's it's not really that big a difference and uh, if evan carter's not making that play then i don't know that really anybody on this roster is but still it was frustrating. The Rangers couldn't do much against Logan Gilbert. He had a, a great, great day. I mean, he is an incredible pitcher and really uh, frustrating that the Rangers are going to go up against him about a million times over the next few years because he's one of a, a bazillion Mariners starting pitchers that are all very freaking good, and most of them are homegrown. I mean, only three hits given up by Logan Gilbert in this one. Two of them were the solo shots. One of them was a little bloop 
against the shift against the shift non shift by Corey Seager, who extended his hitting streak to I believe eight games. But outside of that, there was just really nothing going in this one. The Rangers also had one walk that was worked by, of course, Adolis Garcia. But nine strikeouts for them in this one, not a whole lot going offensively, which makes sense coming off of a long trip with no off day and no getaway day, which again. I don't understand why that's a thing. The Mariners get to stay at home. They had to play a Wednesday night game. The Rangers also had to play a Wednesday night game on the West Coast and fly from Anaheim to Seattle, which is not an easy flight. But meanwhile, the Astros get to have a day off before they head into their weekend series against the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. It's totally cool. I'm totally chill about it. Definitely not mad at all. Absolutely seething. Was absolutely seething last night. Was going to record after the Rangers uh, were going to win, but that did not happen. The Rangers did not win. The Rangers were not able to close this one out. Just a really frustrating day, but this is why you got Jordan Montgomery. I know I said it a a billion times, that that return is going to sting. Thomas J.C. is probably going to be a pretty good big leaguer for a while. T.K. Roby, Takoa Roby, however you like to pronounce it, is probably going to be a pretty good pitcher in the big leagues, but Jordan Montgomery is pitching in huge games for the Rangers right now. Absolutely ginormous, monumentous games for the Texas Rangers right now. And he is living up to the billing. In 11 starts for the Rangers, he's got a 279 ERA, 67 and two-thirds innings, 58 strikeouts, a whip of 1.09. And he is 4-2 and two in those. One of those, he was charged with the loss in a 1, I believe it's a one nothing game to Oakland that uh, doesn't seem super duper fair. And there's another few games where he has not gotten the win where he has deserved it, where the Rangers have not won because he has pitched well and he is deserved to get credit for the win. But he is your game one starter. This is why you bring him in. This is why you trade a couple of probably very painful prospects um, to get a guy like this in these games. And he held the Seattle offense really way down, as did most of this pitching. So Andrew Heaney, phenomenal outing, phenomenal inning, a couple of strikeouts, did walk one of the batters lower in the order, which is incredibly frustrating. Jose Leclerc, phenomenal inning of work, absolutely huge coming off of back-to-back days, worked in the eighth inning. Also, I believe it was it started with Julio Rodriguez, then he got uh, Eugenio Suarez, and I believe he also struck out uh, Teoscar Hernandez. Like, huge inning of work for him. Would have really liked to have seen him come out for the ninth inning, not have Araldis Chapman in there, maybe have Jonathan Hernandez in there, but he's coming off his second day where he pitched in a row, which was frustrating that he ended up pitching in a 5 nothing game as opposed to a save situation against the Angels. But it was 2 nothing when he started warming up, so you can't really be too mad at that. And in this one, throwing him in the 8th inning versus the ninth inning, I know I've talked about Aroldis Chapman not being trustworthy in the ninth inning, but this was Julio Rodriguez, Eugenio Suarez, and Teoscar Hernandez. This was the, the bottom third of this Mariners order is not formidable by any means. I mean, you're going to be facing Dylan Moore, Ty France, Sam Haggerty or Jose Caballero, if you get down to it. Like, that's that's not formidable. That should have been fine and easy for Rolas Chapman. Unfortunately, it wasn't, because he was pitching in a situation where he almost never should have... No, he absolutely never should have been pitching in. And the Rangers have to wait at least another day to punch their ticket to the postseason. Coming up, we're going to look at why it made it so much harder, what the road is now, and why I'm so incredibly frustrated with Bruce Bochy with his decision-making in this game. But first, this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Sleeper. The MLB playoffs are around the corner, which means the clock is ticking on your chance to win 100 times your cash on daily fantasy baseball. Baseball has never been more exciting than it is now with studs like Adolis Garcia, like Jordan Montgomery, like Corey Seager as well. Pick more or less on stats for these stars like home runs, hits, strikeouts, and more for up to a 100 times payout on Sleeper. Get your picks right and you could win big. You know, if you were thinking that the Rangers are going to get a great start from Nathan E. Evaldi tonight and he's going to go and absolutely dominate this Mariners lineup, then you could go put some money on that. Or if you think that Julio Rodriguez is just going to go off on the Rangers and everything's going to be terrible and we're going to be here again tomorrow in the exact same spot of not clinching a playoff spot, then you could go put your money on that. So use promo code Locked On. You'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. 
Shout out to the Everyday Raiders for making Locked On Raiders your first listen every single day. If the Rangers end up clinching tonight, I'll be back tomorrow doing an episode about the Rangers going to the postseason. And if they clinch the AOS, then I'll be doing an episode on that as well. The Rangers take on the Mariners this weekend. You can catch every pitch with the hometown broadcast on SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search Rangers. Now, the Rangers had this game in hand. It was a one-run lead, which is unbelievably terrifying. Um, I had to get all of my... Put on literally my most comfortable clothes. I bought this uh, fall candle, fall scented candle to just kind of calm me down uh, during all of this. And, you know, hoodie on, straight hood up, strings pulled over, just like rocking back and forth in this exact chair, freaking out. But I thought, you know what? Th- this is doable. Like, eventually, the Rangers have to not blow games. Like, mathematically, it cannot keep happening. And if you put people in the right situation to succeed, then it won't necessarily keep happening. But the Rangers decided to go with Jose Leclerc in the eighth inning, which, again, I think was very much the right move. He got Julio Rodriguez to line up pretty sharply to Leody Tavares. A ball that with a lesser center fielder probably would have been a double, um, maybe a triple with Julio Rodriguez's speed, but it didn't matter. He got Eugenio Suarez to pop out, and then he struck out Teoscar Hernandez. Great inning of work. Really, truly great inning of work. Then you see in the ninth inning that Araldus Chapman is warming, and Araldus Chapman had just thrown the previous game, which at the time was a 2 nothing Rangers lead in the bottom of the eighth inning against the Angels. Not exactly a formidable opponent, <clears throat> not exactly a team that was swinging the bat super well, and it was a game where Dane Dunning was at 85 pitches and probably could have thrown the eighth inning. And again, I really wish... Bochi had let him go out there for that eighth inning, because then that would mean that you don't have to throw Raldis Chapman in that situation. Instead, you can save your bullpen, save throwing one of your two, at times, most reliable guys, and just throw Jose Leclerc in the ninth inning, where the Rangers ended up pouring it on and scoring three runs, and it was a fine nothing game, not a save situation, and then, I mean, Jose Leclerc did his job. But that was not the case. And Aroldis Chapman should not have been throwing in this game. It should have been Jonathan Hernandez. It should have been Will Smith. It should have been almost anybody but him. And maybe you should have thrown Andrew Heaney for a second inning, but then you also had Julio Rodriguez coming up. It it made sense to go with Leclerc, but going with Chapman felt like such an obvious mistake because the man is old, okay? The man is old in baseball standards, not for all time. He's 35 years old. He's not like in in the grave. But he is fragile. He is more delicate. He is not someone that you can throw as often. You can't throw multiple innings. You can't throw him on back-to-back days. You really just can't throw him on back-to-back days. He has been truly terrible on zero days rest this year. He's pitched in 13 games in those situations. He's gotten 868 ERA, nine and a third innings pitched, 11 runs, Nine of those are earned. So if you make it an uh, RA instead of an ERA, it is even higher than 8.68. And he's got 15 walks in nine and a third innings. The dude just did not have it tonight. And you could see that from the start. And unfortunately, with this new three batter rule, which I think is taking Bruce Bochy a lot longer, I think it's having much more of an impact on Bruce Bochy, the mid bullpen fixer, than we ever could have anticipated. I mean, he goes up. He faces Cal Raleigh, gets a single on a line drive to left field. Okay, that's fine. Then Dylan Moore squeaks a ball through the left side, gets Cal Raleigh to second. It's incredibly frustrating. The two pitches that he threw to Dylan Moore were both meatballs. There was a slider right down the middle that he took for strike one, and then a splitter right in the middle of the zone, not where you want to throw a splitter. He did not have command of his fastball. You could really tell that. He was kind of all over the place to to Raleigh. I mean, his first pitch was you know looked like it was almost in the dirt. Then he throws a, a fastball that's not a terrible pitch. It's inside, middle in, but still, Cal Raleigh muscles it over to left field. Then he throws a wild pitch to while he's facing Ty France. He throws four pitches to him, walks him. None of them are anywhere close to the strike zone. And here you are. With a 2-1 lead in the bottom of the ninth inning and a game you need to win to go to the playoffs, or you would like to win. If you win it, you go to the playoffs. It is not a need to win. It's not the season's done because they didn't win this. But here you are with bases loaded, bottom of the ninth inning, no outs against a team that admittedly is truly terrible. 
with the bases loaded. Like, they are ungodly bad. They've had so many situations where they could have won a lot more games than they have, but they have been really, really bad with the bases loaded. And they did this with no outs. And in comes Jonathan Hernandez, who probably should, who wasn't even warming to start the inning. I mean, Chapman in those situations, like I said, he's terrible on back-to-back days. You knew that. But against the bottom of this order, I mean, Cal Raleigh is not that great against lefties. Dylan Moore is not a good hitter. Ty France has been terrible this year. But if you throw him four non-competitive pitches, of course you're going to walk him and have the bases loaded. So in comes Mike Ford. In comes, as a pinch hitter, in comes Jonathan Hernandez. He gets Mike Ford to fly out to center field, shallow center field, so it's not even a sack fly, which is great. Honestly, great job by Hernandez. Then Jose Caballero comes in to replace, or Josh... Rojas comes in to replace Jose Caballero to pinch hit, and he pops out into foul territory by the third baseman on in in third base territory. And Josh Young makes an incredible play, ranging as far as he did, and then having to range back when the ball blows back behind him almost, and has the wherewithal to throw it to home plate, knowing that there's a runner that could tag up and score the tying run. Corey Seager makes him aware of this, and the runner doesn't even try because for whatever reason, they decided not to pinch run for Cal Raleigh. I don't know why. He is the tying run in a game where the Mariners really have to win all four of these games to have a chance at the postseason. Like, they, they just really do, especially to win the AL West. Like, they have to win literally all four of them. But br- brilliant, brilliant play. By Josh Young. And then up comes J.B. Crawford, and the pitch to him was not a great pitch. Honestly, it was a sinker right over the middle of the plate. J.P. Crawford was late on it, goes the opposite field, drives it to the left field wall, two RBI double, Mariners win, walk it off, give themselves some life, some hope at the AL West, and the Rangers blow their chance to punch their ticket to the playoffs and get that much closer need perfection from the Astros and the opposite of perfection from themselves to lose the AOS crown unfortunately that's how it played out just an incredibly frustrating decision by Bruce Bochy that was so incredibly predictable I mean I called it everybody called there's a lot of people I mentioned saying "I I called this happening on Twitter yeah so did everybody we all saw this coming this was a mile away anyone could have seen it how is Bruce Bochy the only one that didn't know exactly what was going to happen in that ninth inning. I really just don't understand it. And for all the praise I've given Bochy, and for all the good things he's done, and for keeping this team's head above water, especially after that gut punch of a blowout series against the Astros at home, this is terrible. This was a bad choice, and it was a bad outing again from Raulis Chapman who someone was trying to tell me this was just one game. This is not just one game with Aralus Chapman in these moments. There have been many, many games. And also, every game means significantly more in this situation. There are four games off the top of my head, including this one, that come to mind. Actually, four, not including this one, that come to mind where Aralus Chapman just straight up blew it. The main one, Houston at Houston, July 25th, Rangers are up 9-6 to six in the bottom of the 7th inning. They just scored 3 runs to take the lead, a 3-run lead, heading into the bottom of the 7th inning. You throw Rolls Chapman out there, you think, okay, surely he's not going to blow this one. He comes in, he strikes out Alex Bregman. Okay, good job. Good first out. Then he walks Kyle Tucker. Then he walks Jose Abreu. Then he gives up a 3-run bomb to Chaz McCormick to tie the game. The Astros end up winning that one on a nonsense review, non-review call at home plate, which was the exact opposite of what happened the game before. Um, Just incredibly frustrating, but they shouldn't have gotten to that situation. It was a three-run lead in the bottom of the seventh inning for all the Chapman, and he blew that in a critical game. And if the Rangers won literally just that game, they would already have clinched the AL West. It would already be theirs at this point, no matter if they got swept in these final four games against Seattle. Then, there's another game where Jordan Montgomery pitched brilliantly and Rollis Chapman ended up giving up the lead. Those eight shutout innings in Arizona on August 21st. That was in the middle of the Rangers' disastrous losing streak. Monty had eight shutout innings, and then in comes Rollis Chapman. He gives up a homer to Cattell Marte to tie the game. He did end up going two innings in that one, but the Rangers' bullpen later would blow up. But it should not have mattered. 
it should not have mattered. He was not careful to Cattell Marte through a splitter right in the middle of the zone, and Cattell Marte absolutely crushed it. Rangers end up losing that game, and I believe three or four more after that. Then, the 27th of August at Minnesota. Comes in, 5-4 to four lead in the ninth inning. He walks Michael A. Taylor, then just forgets about the new rule about disengagements and how many times he can throw a pickoff move or forgets that he stepped off the mound and he balks Michael A. Taylor over to second base, then gives up a single to tie the game and the Rangers end up blowing it in 13 innings. Now, he wasn't the only one who screwed up in that one, but that, that just felt so obvious and so egregious and so incredibly unfun. Then, on the 30th of that month, literally three days later, against the Mets in the 10th inning, intentional walk to Pete Alonso, walks Alvarez, DJ Stewart, hit by pitch, loss. Incredibly frustrating. It is not just one game. It is a pattern with Rollis Chapman. And by the way, the guy who you traded for him is probably going to win a Cy Young. That's just the deal. And it was obvious at the time. It was obvious outside of the person that he is. Not to say anything about that, but he is old. He is over the hill. He is not your closer. He is not going to close you games in the postseason. He has so, had so many postseason blowups. So many. He, in that game where the Cubs won the World Series, he almost blew it. He should have blown it. If not for a ball going just foul in Cleveland, he would have blown the World Series Game 7 for the Cubs. He's done it against the Astros in the playoffs uh, as a member of the Yankees. He's just done it for so many teams. And that trade looked horrible at the time. And in hindsight, it's going to be maybe one of the worst of all time. Coming up, we're going to look at what this means for the Rangers moving forward, why their road is so much tougher, and why tonight the Rangers desperately need the best version of Nathan Eovaldi. But first, this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by DoorDash. Bring your last piece of toast, avocado's gone bad, or is the hot sauce bottle empty? Try grocery delivery from DoorDash. You'll get everything you want delivered when you need it right to your door. You've trusted DoorDash for deliveries for your restaurant favorites, and now you can get groceries delivered that actually delivers as well. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered or will make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them out yourself with easy substitu substitutions right in the app and the best in class customer support. DoorDash deliveries delivers groceries exactly how you want it. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code LOCKEDONMLB at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subtotal and delivery fees with with no delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKEDONMLB. Don't forget, that's code LOCKEDONMLB for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. Shout out to the editors for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. I'll be back on Monday at the very latest, hopefully to talk about the Rangers playoff positioning. Odds, not even odds. Hopefully we'll be talking about actual playoff games, previewing them, and looking a little bit back on this regular season. The Rangers take on the Mariners this weekend. You can catch every pitch with the hometown broadcast on SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search Rangers. Now, the the situations for uh, if the Rangers win, clinch, go to the playoffs as a, you know, AL West winner or a wildcard team are very, very confusing. So I'll, I'll kind of break it down a little bit here. The Rangers win the AL West with a combination of just two wins. Just if you win two games, you win the West. Doesn't matter what else happens. You win three games. Great. You still win the West. Um, or if the Astros lose two games or a combination of one win, one Astros loss. That's, that's all it takes for the Rangers to win the AL West. The Astros win if they sweep and the Rangers win one or fewer games of these final three. Now, the Mariners, this gets tricky. It, they have to sweep the rest of this, seri this entire series, and Houston needs to win one game against the Diamondbacks. Just one game. Because then it'll be a three-way tie. Uh, or actually, I think, no. I think if they win zero games, then um, if Houston wins zero games, then uh, it'll be a tie between the Rangers and the Mariners. And the Rangers have the tiebreaker. They sealed that up last weekend in Arlington. So, yeah, even as catastrophic as it would be for the Rangers to get swept in their final series of the season, 
I will throw that up to the curse of Reed Detmers and move on if it means the Rangers win the AL West. But this this gets tricky because the pitching matchups for the rest of this weekend, they, they were not as favorable. Not that this was necessarily favorable. I mean, Logan Gilbert is really freaking good. Maybe better than than Jordan Montgomery. But you're throwing your, your game one guy and having him throw an outing like that <clears throat> where if he wasn't getting squeezed so much on the freaking zone then maybe he could have gone deeper into this one. But no, uh, apparently low strikes and outside strikes and inside strikes are only strikes for Logan Gilbert and not for Jordan Montgomery. I'm so over umpires. Anyway, but the pitching matchup, matchups for the rest of this weekend look probably like this. Nathan Ivaldi tonight versus Brian Wu, who the Rangers have absolutely crushed. They crushed him in his MLB debut. They crushed him last weekend, and hopefully they can crush him again. They need to. They desperately need to. This rookie is pretty good, but the Rangers seem to have his number, and the offense did not show up at all last night. It's fine. I'll chalk it up to... I'll chalk it up just to travel badness and Logan Gilbert being good and <clears throat> the Mariners having some pretty good relievers. I mean... Gabe Spire really going an inning in two thirds perfect on you with three strikeouts. Like that's that's not a great look. Campbell is is not that great. Munoz getting the final out against Adoles Garcia. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> but they didn't have Matt Brash and they only threw Munoz for literally one batter. So I mean they have thrown the crap out of Munoz and Brash and all of their high leverage guys to the point where they're probably pretty exhausted. Brian Wu, a lot of these pitchers are pretty young, and so hopefully they are getting to the point where they are exhausted. But then you go to Saturday's game. It's John Gray on the hill coming off a great, great outing. Hopefully <clears throat> the wrist soreness that, that he was dealing with against against the Angels doesn't bother him at all, and he can go out and be great. But he is going to be faced against Luis Castillo. That is a difficult matchup. The Rangers have had some success against Castillo. Castillo was not sharp at all in his his most recent start. That was against the Astros, who pretty much bludgeoned him. And then, <clears throat> if you get to the, the point on Sunday where the Rangers have not clinched the AL West, or, God forbid, they haven't wrapped up a playoff spot, it's Cody Bradford and the bullpen game of all hands on deck versus George Kirby, who is really freaking good. <clears throat> this is... This is the tough situation the Rangers are in. I mean, there, there's no one who I'd rather have on the hill tonight than Nathan Eovaldi, but it, it has been it has been rough. It has been a rough out. The only way this could possibly line up a little better with what the Rangers have left is if it was John Gray versus Brian Wood. But this is this is the t- the best pitching matchup you have. Like this is the most advantage that you have. Nathan Eovaldi, he has not been his normal self since he has gotten back. The velocity is down. He has battled through. He has kept the Rangers in games. He has done mostly his job, but it's going to be a lot tougher because you're maybe getting five innings out of him tonight. That is what you're hoping for, is five innings out of him. The Mariners' offense didn't really do a whole lot last night against Jordan Montgomery, and you're hoping they don't do a whole lot tonight. I mean, they were one for nine with runners in scoring position. They had guys get on and a couple walks and a couple of little blue pits here, there, and whatever, but the only hit they had with runners in scoring position was unfortunately the one that drove in the winning run. The Rangers didn't even have an opportunity with runners in scoring position. There were there were no runners that were in scoring position. They either scored on a solo shot or reached first base and were done. But this is this is tough. I mean, Nathan Ivaldi has come up, though, in some huge, huge spots for the Rangers. He had the complete game shutout on April 29th, right after Jacob DeGrom went down. He had the complete game one run allowed win at Pittsburgh on May 23rd. And he also had a huge, huge win in that four-game series against the Astros at home, where the Rangers lost three out of four. And the only one that they won was because of Nathan Ivaldi being great. They needed that from him. They need him in these big spots. I don't know that he's magically going to find his velocity in this start. He's probably going to be able to go about 100 pitches. But they need the best start of Nathan Eovaldi's life. They need it in the biggest way. They need to crush Brian Wu's spirit. Crush the Mariners' spirit. Let them know you are not winning the AL West. This is not happening with one win. The Mariners will not win the AL West. It is impossible. They will not be able to do it. And maybe the Rangers will get some help from the freaking Diamondbacks, who are in a playoff spot as of right now, in a tooth and nail battle with between them and the Cubs and the Marlins. And I 
think the Reds are out of it at this point. The Marlins are in a weird spot because of their suspended game that's going to be played on Monday. So <clears throat> that actually helps the Rangers because the Rangers need the Diamondbacks to have something to play for. They they desperately need the Diamondbacks to have something to play for against the Astros. And here's what the pitching matchups will probably line up for look like in, in Arizona this week. you got J.P. France on the hill tonight for the Astros versus Zach Gallen, a guy who was a NL Cy Young frontrunner until he kind of blew up just a little bit in the back half, and, and Blake Snell just went on an amazing run. Zach Allen's still really freaking good. He is finding his form, but uh, the Rangers need need them to win tonight. Then tomorrow, it is going to be Justin Verlander on the hill for the Astros versus, at this point, it's TBD, but it's probably going to be Merrill Kelly. I mean, the Rangers are, are, are in such a weird spot. They need all of the Marlins and Cubs and Diamondbacks to keep winning so it is still competitive so the Diamondbacks still have something to play for so they can hopefully beat the Astros but we just saw the Astros lose a game lose three games in a row to the Royals so this is a tough tough spot right now the bullpen will have no Leclerc no Chapman tonight so your best options are probably John Hernandez and maybe Will Smith Brock Burke will uh, Brock Burke Josh Spores Martin Perez Chris Stratton anybody anybody I don't know Maybe, Andrew Heaney, you want to throw him out there back-to-back days? I don't know that you necessarily want to do that. I wouldn't want to throw Martin Perez and Andrew Heaney. It's just, and Josh Sports hasn't thrown since he's got off the IL. So the Rangers are in a really tough spot. They need not only a good outing by Nathan Eovaldi, they they need a long outing by Nathan Eovaldi. I mean, I don't think he's going to come in there and, and do what he did to to the Yankees in that complete game shutout or that eight and two thirds shutout innings against Oakland where he had like 12 or 13 strikeouts. I'm not asking for that. I'm not asking for him to start throwing 98 again. I'm asking him to just shut this mid Mariners offense down. That has not been consistent. They have not been consistent game to game. They have not been consistent all season, month to month, series to series. Like it's just inning to inning. This offense has not done a whole heck of a lot of anything. And Rangers offense, it's Brian Wu. You've crushed him. Keep crushing him. Bring the bats. Do not stop until you have dropped 40 runs. Never stop pulling out these fantastic at-bats. Maybe you think about switching up the lineup, putting Nathaniel Lowe a little bit lower. Maybe put up Adoles Garcia a little bit higher in the order. I don't think they'll do that. I think they'll keep the lineup that brought them to the dance. But this lineup needs to have one of its best games. They needed one of its biggest games from Nathan Eovaldi. It is go time. There are no more excuses left. Three games left. You can do this. Magic number is two. Win two. You're in. Don't worry about the stupid, stinking Houston Astros. Go win that AOS for the first time in seven years. Punch your ticket to the playoffs tonight and wrap it up tomorrow with a great game by this team. That's going to do it for today's show. Thank y'all so much for listening and subscribing. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy first place Texas Rangers baseball.